So what we see in front of us is a mannequin. It has a needle in the back. We're gonna have several questions on the test with either mannequins or people with either needles or catheters in their back. Uh, here we have what's a nine centimeter uh, needle, two-way needle. Uh, all the needles on the test are gonna be nine centimeters in total length. This mannequin actually has this black tubing, which is to simulate the uh, spinal space. And then in between the tubing and the skin is the epidural space. If you were to go too far and the black tubing is water, it would simulate having CSF. Uh, which is not what our goal is with the epidural. Okay, let's remember a couple of things. Remember that we're gonna count backwards on these needles if they're already in the back. So you're gonna count from the end of the actual needle, which is nine, and work your way back with each line marking, which will be one centimeter each. So the next line would be eight, then seven, six, and in this case, five is at the skin. Okay, so for the test, like I said before, you're gonna have questions that are either gonna have a needle in the person's back, a catheter in someone's back, or even possibly a catheter inside a needle in someone's back. You're always gonna be given enough information to be able to answer the question. And again, assume that all needles are nine centimeters in length for the actual needle that can go into the back. And we just showed you the previous picture that uh, addressed that. Okay, we're gonna assume that this is now in the epidural space in another patient. This patient's obviously a little bit bigger. As we can see here, the catheter or the, the needle had to get inserted further than the previous patient. So we're gonna assume that the patient is a little bit larger body habitus. And again, we can now answer the question of is, what is the skin to epidural space distance? I want you to now to count out from the end of the needle to the skin and tell me what the depth is for this patient. Okay, so I'm now gonna help you guys along and we'll answer it together if you haven't already done the quiz. So seeing the needle here, I always start from the end of the actual needle at the nine centimeter mark and I work on my back. So nine centimeter, eight centimeter, seven centimeter. In this case, I don't see the next line of the six centimeter. So I assume that this person's skin to epidural uh, distance is probably about six and a half centimeters. So between the six and the seven line is where the skin is right now in this patient. So again, you count back nine, eight, seven. We don't see six, but we're definitely not at seven. So we're at about six and a half. All right, so now we gotta put the catheter in again. I'm just showing these different tidbits of the procedure, but I'm not showing you how to do it the right, proper, stare away right now. We're just talking simply to learn how you're gonna be tested uh, on the exam and how to be able to answer the questions the best way possible. So here again, we have a mannequin. You see on the top surface, we're basically trying to get to the space between the tube and the skin there. That's the epidural space. If we go too far, we get into the actual subarachnoid space, which is technically that black tube. That black tube is a dura mater. Inside would be the CSF. We would have a wet tap, fluid would come out. We would know that we made a mistake and then we have to pull the needle out. So here we are again. This needle has a helper blue piece on it. This little helper blue piece makes it a lot easier to get the catheter to get into the actual epidural needle. It's surprisingly more difficult than you would think. So again, this is a blue helper needle. It changes how much catheter is at the new hub of the needle, which is a blue piece. But in the end, people do this a lot of different ways. A lot of people are training or precepting residents and CRNAs now to actually just load the whole catheter to the 20 mark, and then basically take the needle out uh, while you're evenly exchanging the catheter in with the needle coming out. And basically at the end, after the catheter is now the only thing remaining on the skin, you then pull the catheter back to the distance that is required based on what your initial measurement was from skin to epidural space. Remember, when you are using a catheter in any type of needle system, the catheter only goes into the needle. It never gets pulled back because it can cause sh a shearing of the catheter and it'll leave the catheter inside the patient. So the needle, the catheter can only go into a catheter or into a needle, I'm sorry. And then the needle can only come out. If there's a catheter in front of it, you can never push the needle forward at that point because again, it's gonna shear off the catheter. So again, remember that it's very key. If you already have a catheter going outside that needle, you never ever advance the needle any further. The only option is to pull the needle out at that point. And if you have a, a needle that's in a patient, the only direction the catheter goes is in. Once it's in, it cannot come out. If 
you had to pull the catheter out, you would remove the needle first because that's going in the proper direction, which is uh, out of the catheter. And then afterwards, you can adjust the catheter by pulling it out. The catheter can never be pushed back in. If it's pulled out partially during the process of the exchange here, then you have to redo the procedure all over again. Okay, on to the next way that I can test you on the exam. So you have this catheter, and we're going to assume that all the previous examples we gave are in play. So I'm telling you now that this person's skin epidural space in the chart is telling you that it's 5.5 centimeters. And this patient is complaining of unilateral blocks. So only part of their stomach or where their contractions are you know, currently going on or is hurting. And so the other part's not. And so you're going assessing the catheter, trying to figure out what's wrong. Is it not in all the way? Uh, has it migrated? And so on. So what you're going to do is, is you're going to first look in the chart, see what the skin to epidural distance was. And then you're going to assume that the person put the catheter in five centimeters, but it's okay if they didn't. You know you have enough, you have about three to five centimeters to work with, with the amount of the catheter that's supposed to be in the epidural space. So if it tells you that you're 5.5 centimeters from skin to epidural space, you assume that enough catheter in the epidural space would be 5.5 plus 3, so 8.5 centimeters to the maximum of 5.5 again from the chart plus 5, so 10.5. And that would be the correct answer for the range of what should be read at the skin. So now look at the catheter at the skin, and you have to now be able to tell me, is this catheter an adequate depth inside the patient? So the catheter, you have to be able to read the catheter and be able to tell me, Reading the catheter's numbers, those marks on the uh, catheter, is that insufficiently based on the math we just did? So in this case, the answer is no. The catheter is actually in deeper than it's supposed to be, and maybe it has migrated or moved into a certain area. Well, we know we can have upwards of five centimeters in the epidural space, so let's just pull it back a centimeter, because right now I'm reading this at... 14, 13, 12, about 11 and a half. And the max it should be is about 10 and a half. So if we pulled it back a centimeter, maybe that's going to relocate that into a space that's going to be more uniformly spreading the local anesthetic. For the test, be comfortable understanding the differences between where the catheter is from skin to epidural space and then inside the epidural space, understand the relationship that is when you have a needle on the test and you're looking at the markings and you're being told that that's skin to epidural space or that's at the point of loss of resistance. So try and put all this together for the test. These are how we're gonna ask questions. Uh, really take your time if you have the epidural equipment with you to play with something, either putting it into a watermelon, uh, putting it into the back of a tissue box, or hiding it over, uh, inside a book, uh, as Marianne had pointed out. And you could then you know, imagine that being in the skin, you can't see the needle, and then pretending at a certain depth is where you're gonna have your loss of resistance, and then threading the, the catheter through there and practicing.